Well, hello everyone, and uh, thank you for inviting me today. I'm uh, excited to be part of this movement and uh, trying to get youth more involved in climate action. So I am the Sustainability Division Manager at the City of Thousand Oaks, and what that means is I manage the um, group of people who are responsible for um, energy waste, recycling, uh, water conservation in the city. So we have programs that are to do with the city operations themselves, our municipal operations, and also programs that are community-wide programs for the whole city, for all the residents and businesses in the city. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about them and about our role in climate action and also how you can get involved. I don't know how many of you are local to Thousand Oaks or Westlake. Um, I should have had that as, as one of my uh, poll questions, but actually I don't. So uh, maybe we can find that out at some point. But if you are in the city or in Westlake, or if you know um, about the city, then that would be really, really helpful for you to actually get involved. And I will tell you a little bit about how to do that. So I'm gonna move uh, ahead. I have a bit of a presentation. I have some questions for you also. So let me, um, let me start off here by sharing my screen. And hopefully you can, uh, you can see my screen here. So moving right into uh, climate action. So I know that the reason that you're all interested and involved is because you're concerned about climate change. And I'm assuming that you're pretty well educated about it in order to have that kind of interest, you're motivated and you must know something about the, the projections for climate change and also those possible impacts. So I'm just gonna kind of quickly um, go through those so that we can discuss them. So as it stands with the emissions um, unchecked, which largely they are globally, there's been um, no significant reductions globally, although there are efforts to put programs in place, um, the emissions are still increasing faster than um, they're decreasing. So we're still at a, a rate of increase. Um, the projections are that by the end of this century, the temperatures locally, this is for Los Angeles, will increase to probably about 10 degrees Fahrenheit on average, the daily temperatures. So when you think about what that means in the summer, if you were in Thousand Oaks, instead of having averages in the mid to high 80s, they're gonna be in the mid to high 90s. And I know we've just had a heat wave here and people can't wait for it to end. Um, not only because it restricts what we can do outside and our comfort and health levels and everything else, but those kinds of long-term temperature increases also have drastic effects for our ecosystems. So we'll talk a little bit about those, but this is what we're trying to fight, is this overall projected temperature increase, quite a drastic um, increase. And I'm, you're probably familiar with um, the different reports, really the way, the best way to get educated is by looking at some of the things that California has done because California is really ahead of the game here, which is very exciting for us. So the impacts, when we talk about what are the impacts, they're multi, they're in, in multiple different areas. One of the most significant impacts is in water. All of the water here in the city is imported from the Bay Delta area from Sacramento. It comes from the snow melt from the Sierra Nevadas. And that is true for most of the water supply of Southern California. It either comes down the Eastern Sierras to Los Angeles or down the Western side of the Sierras and through um, the San Joaquin Valley to the cities that are in Ventura County. The exceptions, people that, that aren't connected to that would be like Santa Barbara, for example, but the rest of the county is all connected to this. So we rely on that snow melt to provide us with water all year. And the great thing about the snow is that it provides a natural reservoir, it stores the water for us. And then it gradually melts throughout the year and provides us a continuous supply. So the, the 
concern over climate change is that if we don't get as much rain, as much precipitation as snow, and it comes as water and rain instead, then it's all going to run off and we won't have that storage all year. That's a huge concern because we don't have the means to store rainfall. We don't have the reservoir capacity to store that kind of rain that's um, going to be coming instead of snow. So that's that's one huge concern. Uh, another concern is to do with um, pests. So when uh, when species, trees, plants, crops, etc., become heat stressed, they become less resilient to pests. And also, pests that used to die off in winter are no longer dying off anymore. And so there used to be a point at which it was cold enough that these things that would interrupt their life cycle and um, we weren't so affected by them. But these days there are many, many more pests that threaten our crops and our trees. And it's a big concern for our ecosystems in general, not just for our, our food supply. What happens with the food supply is that, you know, there'll be more and more pesticides come out and then use more chemical spraying to kill the pests. But on our urban forest and trees, there have been all kinds of in the sudden, um, sudden oak death, there have been the pine beetle. Um, there are many others, something called a shot hole borer. These are destroying our, our urban trees and also our forests. So we're all very familiar with the wildfire disaster. This year is the biggest, um, the largest number of acres ever in California to burn and we're only up to the beginning of October and our fire season is really just beginning. And those of you who live locally will know that in Ventura County we've already suffered a lot of fires, the Thomas fire in in Ventura, and then more recently, the Wolsey and the Hill fires coming through Thousand Oaks. People are very worried about fire, not just because it threatens homes and um, property, but also um, it, it destroys all of our, our open space as well, and um, means that you know our vegetation is gone, our storage, our carbon storage from the forests. And the amount of carbon dioxide that's put into the atmosphere from burning these trees is huge. It's massive. It, it, it um, pretty much outweighs any other source of carbon. Uh, coastal erosion. We're lucky that the city isn't right on the coast, but of course for those communities that are on the coast, the sea level rise is causing a lot of concern for those um, municipalities. Health, both um, from a pollution standpoint. So when you have hotter air, uh, you also have more ozone forming. So people who are asthmatic have uh, more cases or there's more cases of asthma respiratory illness as a result of climate change, but also other people who are more vulnerable are unable to um, you know, suffer from the effects of severe heat for sure. And some people in, don't have access to air conditioning. And so those people are very much threatened by the temperature increases. So let me just ask you from your perspective, I'm sorry, I'm trying to go back to, ah, trying to find my PowerPoint access from my polls here, sorry. Um, not sure how to get back to the full screen here. Maybe I'm going to stop sharing for a moment and um, launch this poll. So I have a couple of questions for you. And this is the first question, which impact of climate change concerns you the most? So I know that you're all concerned about these things, but um, can, you, can you all see this poll? It looks like it, some people are voting, so. I'll give you a minute or so to tell me what bothers you most or what concerns you the most.
So I'll take another 10 seconds or so, and then I'll end the polling and share the results here. Okay, so you can see um, how you all feel about this. Not surprisingly, wildfires are the biggest concern. I mean, really for the, the threat of life, loss of life and loss of property over the last, I would say five years, it's, it's really, really accelerated. And um, obviously, that's probably our biggest concern, life-threatening. Some of the other threats are very, very important, but we tend to focus on threats that are um, more immediate, like short-term. And that's one of the problems in general with climate change is that it's hard to get people's attention on things that are very long-term threats that were gonna come up, you know, five years, 10 years, 20 years from now. So, but I'm glad to see that a lot of people are concerned over the water supply because for most people, every, everybody here has ample running water. And so it's really hard to see that as a threat, but we really need to be preparing for that now. Okay, let me, um, let me go back to where I was. And, uh, so what can we do about this? I'm sure that you're familiar with um, the mitigation strategies. Essentially, it's all about reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. We have to do that at the same time that we're trying to adapt to the climate change threats that are already happening. So we have to cope with those, but at the same time, we have to try to reduce our emissions for the future. The emissions, that we have to reach the targets, the reductions in the greenhouse gases are massive. We, we have to do a 40% reduction um, by the end of this decade, by 2030. And then we're looking at doing, and that would be down to here, at an 80% reduction by 2050. So imagine that four-fifths of all the energy transportation emissions have to disappear in your lifetime. And we have to find alternatives for those. That's a massive change to the way that people live. And trying to find the means to do that and trying to um, incentivize ways to, to um, have residents and businesses participate in that is a huge, huge challenge. Luckily, we live in California and California has taken the lead on these initiatives. And luckily you're gonna have um, Henry Stern here to tell you a little bit about that. So I'm not gonna go into all the California's initiatives, but California is really not just a leader in this country, but it's also a leader throughout the world in taking action on climate change. And some of the things that the, the state has done is to set emissions targets and then put programs in place that are gonna help us reach those targets, like the electric vehicle initiative that you've probably heard about. And I'm gonna leave that to Senator Stern to talk a little bit about uh, more about what California is doing. So I'm just gonna talk for a couple of minutes about what's happening in the city of Thousand Oaks. So we're in the middle of a general plan update right now. The general plan is the policy document that guides the city and it guides it over a long term, over 20 to 30 years of how the city is gonna be developed. And so it's very important because once these policies are in place, they become the law essentially. Whatever the city decides about where and what can be built and how the land use is gonna be developed and what the housing plan is and the transportation, all of those policies gets cemented in at this time. And there's about another 18 months or so to go through this process. So we're in the midst of that right now. And anybody that lives in the city or wants to participate, you can go to that website that's at the bottom of this slide here, toaks2045.org. 
and there's ways to participate. There are some surveys, you can sign up to get newsletters and information, you can participate in public meetings, but it's really a way for you to get engaged with the, what the city of the future is gonna be like. And it's very important because if what tends to happen with things that the city launches is one always hears from people that are unhappy, that don't like what you've done. So what you wanna do is you want to be a positive force that goes in and say, this is what I want. These are the things I want, not go in and say, these are the things I don't want because the city is struggling to meet its objectives, to meet its goals, to develop in a way that's sustainable. And then if it puts forward ideas and all it hears is we don't want this and we don't want that, what you really wanna hear is what do you want? So I would really encourage you to get involved in that. Go in, participate, email, email the, the people at the city. You'll be really, really surprised how much say you could actually have in things that happen in the city just by regularly participating in council meetings or sending in emails. People are very surprised. Sometimes initiatives happen because 10 people write into a council member about something that they wanna see happen. And so one of the things that I would really encourage you to do is get together as a group and think of things that you would like to see happen. And all of you write in and email a council member or all of the council members about those. And you'll be really surprised how much effect that has. So the other thing that's happening in parallel with the general plan is that we're doing our um, climate and environmental action plan right now. And so this is gonna be developed over the next year. And again, you will see some links here. Go to toaks.org, which is the city's main webpage slash climate action. Please go to that page sign up for the listserv there where you'll get updates on what's happening, what the city is doing, how you can participate, like any of the public meetings that you can take part in. There's also a survey where we want to get your uh, response on um, how, how the city should move forward and tackle climate change. So I, again, something for you to be involved in, I would really encourage you. Um, let me quickly go through a couple of things that the city is doing, just so you have an idea, but your participation is really important in this. So we have some plans for the city's operations, municipal operations, both in energy and sustainability. We also have this complex strategic plan as far as sustainability goes, and, you know, I'm happy to share this. PowerPoint with anybody afterwards if you have any interest in looking at these different things. Obviously, I'm not going to talk through them all now, but, but making this climate and environmental action plan is a, is it's a composite of different pieces. There's energy, there's transportation, there's the environment, there's water, there's waste, there's all of those different things go into it. And so we're working on all of these different pieces. And if you have a voice or want to have a voice in any of those, as I said, I would really encourage you to do that. Some of the things we do do are wastewater treatment plant. We have completely renewable energy there. We have um, biogas from the sewage treatment. We have solar. We're building a microgrid there, which will um, be built sometime in the next 12 months. Yes, that's what I would say. We wanna thank, uh, thank Senator Stern for his leadership on a lot of these different items, making all of this, this possible. We, this microgrid is gonna be funded 100% by Southern California Edison and will allow us to run completely off the grid and completely on renewable energy, even when there's power outages. So that's been a, a wonderful accomplishment. So we're doing all of these things for our own equipment. We've replaced our HVAC. We're going to be moving to LED streetlights in a couple of months. We're replacing, um, doing renovations on our water pumps. So there's a lot of things that the city is taking action on. Um, currently, 
And they have a lot of CNG, natural gas vehicles. We're slowly moving over to electric vehicles. Uh, whenever we can, we're trying to get electric buses. They've, there are some challenges. They're very expensive. They have limited range, but we're heading in that direction. As soon as we can get them, we will. Uh, we have a completely new waste hauling agreement coming on in a, about a year from now where everybody's going to have organics recycling. That's food waste, not just trash and recycling, but every business and every resident would also, would also be collecting food waste and composting all of that food waste. So these are all part of California's drive and their initiatives to find ways to reduce greenhouse gases. Um, you probably know uh, our preservation of open space has been very important for the city. 40% uh, of the city is, is open space and preserving that ecosystem is really important. So the next part is tackling our actual emissions for the city. And you'll see from this that 50% of our emissions come from transportation. That's a huge, huge sector. And that's where we really have to focus. So that's, that's really what our climate action plan is about. How are we gonna tackle these transportation emissions? And I would say, I'm, I'm actually gonna stop here because I'm out of time, but this electricity portion has actually gone down quite a bit because we get, now the city is signed on for Clean Power Alliance at a default rate of 100% renewable energy. So about 80% of the people in the city are getting 100% renewable energy, renewable electricity. So that's really decreased the footprint from electricity, that's huge. So once the electricity piece is sort of out of the picture, what that really leaves is transportation and natural gas. And I'm just gonna jump ahead to this slide and then I'm gonna stop at this point. So this is our current um, greenhouse gas emissions for the city. And you will see that on the bottom there is the transportation emissions. And the next one is the electricity and then natural gas. And then there are some other more minor components. But the yellow area, you can see that electricity, that big drop down is what signing up the Clean Power Alliance has done for the city. It has really reduced our emissions from electricity to a very, very minimal amount. But you'll see that once that's taken care of, the big sectors that have to be addressed are transportation and natural gas. And that's where the big questions are. What's, how's the city gonna address that? Okay, at that point, I'm gonna um, stop now. I know I'm out of time and I wanted to, I would like to hear from Senator Stern because I'm sure he's got some initiatives to share with us on how the state's gonna help us um, to manage our emissions. So. Thanks very much.